Hi, I'm Deb Nelson with Nixine Publishing. We're doing a series about graphene and it features our editor-in-chief, Adrian Nixon. Welcome, Adrian. Hello, Debbie, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, Adrian is over in the UK and I'm here in the United States and we're going to do this across the pond interview. Let's go forward and our next question that we have, if you, well, I should mention, if you haven't been watching our series before, we have several videos before this one and we'll have several after. So take a look and uh, find our videos on our website and on YouTube, Nixing Publishing. All right, so our question for today, Adrian, is what are graphene's properties? Oh, short question, bit of a longer answer. And for this, I'm going to have to share my screen. So bear with me okay. while I just click some buttons at this end. And I'll take our video off as well. Uh, so just so you can see the, uh, the screen. There we go. Can you see that um, on screen, Debbie? It looks perfect. Excellent. Good. So what are graphene's properties? It's got... Well, it, graphene is a multifunctional material in one way. It just has all these different superlative properties. So as you can see from the screen, there's, it's just littered with things that the graphene is best at. They're called superlatives. It, when it was first isolated in 2004, and Andre Geim and Kostya Novoselov did their um, prodding and poking of graphene once they'd isolated it, they found some interesting properties. It is 200 times stronger than steel. It's the world's best conductor of electricity. Uh, it's not a superconductor, uh, it, but it is much, much better than copper. It conducts heat better than anything else. Um, if you try and tear it, it's 100 times more tear resistant than steel. It is, it's got the highest melting point of any material in a vacuum, uh, something like 5,500 degrees C. It's so high, nobody's really sure for sure. Um, but you could probably put this stuff on the surface of the sun and it would probably survive. Um, it's very stable, meaning uh, it's not going to rot or fall apart or UV degrade. It is uh, probably um, non-toxic, although we've still got to be, uh, we haven't got, had the final word on toxicity yet, but all the testing over the last 10 years has shown that um, it doesn't really have any poisonous properties. Although one thing you do need to be aware of is uh, graphene dust. You wouldn't really want to breathe that in just like any other dusts. Um, so it's pretty good there. Um, flexible and transparent, uh, so you can bend it, be through it. A single layer of graphene absorbs about 2.3% of the light shining on it. So very transparent, but you should actually be able to see a one atom thick layer. Um, now, the last two, uh, they've only just been discovered in the last few months. So the world's most fatigue resistant material, this means if you get a piece of graphene and you stretch it across a drum, let's say, and then you poke it, and you can, you'd have to poke it a billion times for the graphene layer to fail. That's a one atom thick layer, remember. It's incredible. And then just a few weeks ago, uh, Andre Geim and his team uh, discovered that uh, it's the world's most impermeable material. So uh, they did this testing with um, helium gas. And they found that one atom thick layer of graphene is equivalent to a kilometer thick wall of glass in terms of permeability. And if you think about it, when you get um, helium balloons from uh, the shop for a party or something, you'll, you'll notice that they start off uh, quite um, uh, stretched and tight and they'll fly to the ceiling if uh, you let go of them. But over time, the balloons sort of deflate and crumple up and fall on the floor. And what's happening there is the helium gas is so small, the, the atoms of helium gas are so small, they can work their way through the material. And so even something like a, that seems to be impermeable, like a balloon, the helium gas will work its way through, but not graphene. If you made a balloon out of graphene, just one atom thick layer, it would probably contain that helium probably till the end of the universe. That's roughly what we might have found. Time to stop sharing and come back to you. So, so we need graphene balloons next, right? <laughs> yeah, if we can make the single crystal big enough, but that's a whole other story for other things. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so can you tell us why graphene has so many superlatives? For that, I'll need to get a molecular model. So bear with me a second. Great. Normally, normally I have these things to hand. So, yeah, 
Visual. Visual, yes. So if you look at this, this is the one atom thick layer of graphene, just a molecular model representation of it. We've got carbon atoms and we've got bonds between the, the atoms. And maybe actually, Debbie, we could probably spend another video just talking about what bonds are and what atoms are. That might be interesting to the audience. For the moment, just accept this is this represents a one atom thick layer of graphene. Now, do you remember we said it was strong? Well, the reason it's strong is because these bonds here, carbon to carbon, are some of the strong, well, pretty much the strongest bond in nature. And so you've got this chicken wire mesh, which you just cannot pull apart. That's the reason it's 200 times stronger than steel. The thermal conductivity, um, heat is basically atoms vibrating. And what they've discovered in graphene is rather than vibrate, the heat, if you heat, a, heat one end up at this end, it makes it vibrate. But can you see how you can get ripples and waves going through the graphene? That's how heat right. passes through graphene. And it's like flicking a bedsheet. Uh, it's called a phonon, an acoustic phonon. And it flicks the heat from one side to the other really, really fast. So that is a superb conductor of heat. Um, Transparency, we can't really go into here. Uh, the flexibility, you can see that you can bend it. And that would happen in the one atom thick layer. So you're beginning to get the idea that uh, where the properties come from. The one other thing to, that's worth, probably worthwhile mentioning, um, these bonds here, it's not a perfect representation, but in reality, they sort of stretch as well as wobble and bend. And when, th when you heat things up, they, they jiggle around. Most of the time, bonds will just break apart, and then that's when and they'll break apart a little bit, and then you go, uh, the atoms will sort of flow around one another, but still sort of loosely hold together. That's a liquid state, and that's when things melt. But if you put more heat in, they jiggle around so much that individual things fly off, and that's when they become a gas. Because this is the strongest bond in nature, that's the reason it takes so much energy, so much heat to actually cause it to fall apart. It doesn't actually go to a liquid, it goes straight from a solid to a gas, something called sublimation. And that's the reason it has such a high melting point as well. So one brief molecular model, uh, hopefully several explanations there. Does that make sense? Yes, it really does. And it's very interesting that it goes straight from straight to a gas. It doesn't go through a liquid form. And, and this is what the, they're having to work out this from uh, molecular computer simulations at the minute, because what do you put the highest melting point compound in to contain it, to heat it up, to then look at it? So this is the best guess at the minute. Right. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Well, Adrian, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, we will be back again with some more discussion about graphene. Yeah, let's do lots more of these. Thanks a lot, Debbie. Bye-bye.